Okay, what up guys? I've just come to let you know I've got a bunch of stuff going on back here. And um, this is all of my latest dev build experiments with all the doors. Got some inspiration from a couple of people. I'm going to hope to try and put links in the description for those people. I couldn't remember or find the links for the one particular design. But um, watch on in the back. Like I say, every single door which you're going to see there is going to get explained in the next sort of 20 minutes. <laughs> So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you all uh, in a minute to explain more stuff. I've got two buttons, they're both linked into the flip-flop and that will use the light and that's not going to come in today but it will be soon so the idea is I can push the button in any combination and it'll turn on or off this light okay now the other thing a lot of people were asking about speed controllers here's your basic rail so we've got a little doody sitting on the rail and um, he's a rail docker facing down on top of the rail. If I push this button, because they are, this is linked to the rails, and this button is linked to the rails. Now, because we've got a rail which is facing left, if I hit this button, it'll change all the rails the button's connected to, to that direction. So as you can see, we can change the rail. But it's not moving. And the reason for that is because I have hit C, and slave these rails to a speed controller. The speed controller is then attached to a number of activation blocks. It's actually a ratio, I've, I'm told. So you don't need to have five, you could just have two, I think. Um, but the point is, if I put this on, it'll move at the slowest speed. If I put it on again, it'll go a little bit faster. And you have to set it back now, a little bit faster. Turn it on again, even faster still, and I'm told that this will go even faster. I couldn't see much difference between six, maybe it goes even faster again. But the point is, that enables you to get some speed out of the rails. So that's speed controllers, and remember how these are done, because you actually hit C on the speed controller, and then V, 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 V on the activation blocks. And then uh, that'll come into play in just a second when we take a look at how to do 45 degree turns so as you can see 45 degree turn and again and again and again it looks like my webcam has taken over my microphone today so that's why it sounds strange okay so the way this is done or the way I'm currently doing it because the old way I did it doesn't work anymore um, if I put a knot block into the rail rotator and then attach the button to that, so if I show the links, C and V, C and V, and then C on the rail rotator, and I've got four activator blocks, much like with the speed controller over here. And what we've got is you hit the button, the trigger sends it round 45 degrees. Now, if I was to hit two of them, it's going to do 90 degree turns. Okay, if I hit three of them, it's going to give, I think it's 135 degree turns next, and then 180 degrees. So each block you add gives you another 45 degrees up to 360. After that point, it'll just keep spinning forever. So, that's good to know. So if you want to do your 45 degrees, you only need two blocks. One off, one on. Seems to work for me. And I'll give you a 45 degree. So, hopefully that explains that. For the rest of it, we're just going to be showing off some of these doors which we've built. Uh, this was the first one to demonstrate the idea. There we go, so an interlocking door. It's all seamless. The floor is the mothership. 
it can be completely hidden and encapsulated inside a very small area you know enough to, to actually cover the door workings there's no gaps it's all snug and also you can leave it easy accessible under here as well the uh, style is the same as in the last couple of videos so the actual workings aren't any different I will show you how that works okay so that's one type of door I call that sliding type you got a rail under here two rails under here and uh, like I say the buttons control whether they are contracting or expanding all right so moving on got the next type this is a rotating rail whenever it's triggered it rotates we'll take a look underneath in just a second but it rotates to reveal a doorway so if we now go through here and have a look underneath it's actually a lot simpler these ones than they than they, than they seem so what you've got is you've got your 180 degree selection you've got a knot into the rotator just like I just showed with the 45 degrees a second ago and then all that happens is whenever someone hits the button it does the 180 which either reveals or hides the door next up we've got a similar one although this one's done in a different way so as you can see it does uh, what's that 270 degrees so it spins all so it spins all the way around and then stops at 90 degrees after that so to allow people through I've noticed that if you use a wedge on the edges as you can see I've used a wedge on the edges then the collisions are much more forgiving it would not let you do this with blocks this is why I've used wedges at the edges great little trick and you can cover that up or make that part of the design if you want <coughs> just taking a quick look underneath so like I say all of these designs are completely seamless you can completely hide all the workings and there are no rails showing the only moving parts that appear are the actual doors so there's the workings again it's exactly the same as that one just upside down and all I did was I put a symmetry line on the core and I built away from the station which eventually poked through the other side and because the fulcrum is at the bottom but there's no actual dock there the dock is here that gives it the ability to turn around like that okay so now we've taken a quick look at this one I like this one because it's so simple uh, we can take a look at the one opposite so this one here is uh, a little bit more industrial looking so it's an up down so you know it's uh, one goes up one goes down and it leaves a little bit left so you've got a kind of a jigsaw or a dovetail kind of thing dovetail dove fantail and underneath you can see that's how it looks all I've got is an up down controller for the one side and an up down controller for the other side the rail only needs to be as long as the actual piece of door moves oh yeah they look tidy on both sides as well I forgot to mention that um, and then you have an activation block which basically tells each rail to either go up and down or down and up so you know if I zap this one here you can see it working back there as you can, like there zap it again see the work I should really show the workings of this one. It's really simple though, this one actually. And that's why I like it. It's like four blocks, five blocks, plus the switch. Oh yeah, except for the activation blocks. I forgot about the activation blocks. All it is is just that one piece down there. Moves. We've seen this now. We've seen how that works. And like I say, the floor. The floor is the mothership on this one so when you're walking on the floor uh, there's no there's no problem with uh, falling through things or anything okay so that's those three so let's come over here now first we'll take a look at this one nothing wrong button 
There we go. So this is the actual door door that actually turns out. And in the actual room, it's nice and flush. And I've done it in a way that it can actually go all the way. So it's gone all the way to the wall now. So if I give that a double zap from this side, done. It's a little bit more like a vault bulkhead, I guess. And uh, quite a fresh dynamic as well. The way that one is done is the wonder nap, which I showed ages ago. So one button will make it go 90 degrees one way and the other button makes it go 90 degrees back. So that's how it's able to open and close. I mean, I'm sure there's another way of doing that for logic, but I'm trying to do it simply to explain the idea. I mean, some of these are just experiments, this one especially. But it works. Right, next up is a um, pretty cool one. It's got interlocking teeth and it does 135 degrees when it opens. Oh, whoops, I pushed it the wrong button. There we go. And this one, you really get a feel for it because it's really quite, it's pretty big and it opens out like that. It will open out again. <laughs> But it doesn't like it, so closed it goes. And like I say, flush fit. Flush fit on all sides and no working is showing. It's the beauty of this system, you're not restricted. Except with these activation blocks, there's a lot of uh, activation blocks sort of on this, on this system. Just to show you here, you can see how it works. See it trying to turn there, getting stuck. Going back, let me turn it back to its original position. Eh, there we go. It's closed again now. So very simple. Using the Wondernut system I put on Instagram and showed in an earlier Rails demo. Um, it's a bit too complicated to, to go through it right now, but I'll do a tutorial on how to build all of these. Um, right, next up. Next up is a really cool one and I want to get a credit because this is actually inspired and has further inspired even more door designs. This is pretty cool. Two seconds, I need to get the name of the guy. Well, I looked everywhere and I'm pretty sure I even commented on the guy's post, but oh well. Okay, so from here, um, it does this. And the nice thing about it is it just sits there on the side. And if there was a wall or a small corridor, it would fit, which is cool. Um, also, it stacks up back quite nicely as well. Um, you can speed this up. This hasn't got a speed enhancer on it. And it would work really well on a small door, which is quality. And it led on to another door, which I'll show you in a minute. So let's see, we've been on this one, I think. Oh no. So this is just a big old chunky door. This is one of the first ones I did, I think. Just to show, you know, big old chunky door. But the best thing about it was, if you look, it's all the original corridor, everything around it. And if you come over here, you can see that's where it sticks out. But you can easily cover that up. So there's no reason why anyone has to see that. Oh! should really show you that last one, shouldn't I, a little bit better. This one here, as you can see, was a bunch of poles. But I've done it upside down, so they move along the rail with the pieces of door beneath. So it's actually that way up. All built upside down, you see. And then we just have a gap, which is where the floor goes. If I just activate it, it works a bit like my old, my elevator design because when you click a button, it sets the up and left. So there you go, up and left. And then if I want to go the other way, it goes right and down. 
I really want to put credit for the guy that inspired this design as well because I saw his and had to have a go. Uh, I think he put a GIF up in our G Plus community. Um, so I'll gladly put a link, uh, credit in the description for the guy that inspired me to do that one. Okay, so we've done this one. We've done this one. We've done. Wait, no, we haven't done these. Okay. So, first of all, whoa, I'm getting crushed by my ship core. Ah, yeah, I've shown. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. So, spiral doors. Spiral doors can be done. No problem now. And I figured you might want to have a look at that, so let's have a look at the outside. This is probably the most complex one because it's got four separate rails moving in two different directions off of two buttons. Yeah, yeah. So if I just activate it, we can see what it does. And that gives us the effect that we want. Beautiful. Um, and that was pretty much, you know, the longest, like this one here was, was speed enhanced. So when I did this one, it really goes for it. But the beauty of the single rail ones is they're much easier to construct, much more compact, they don't take up as much space. So it's easier to fit that into a build. You only need the trough for the core and the dock to move down the rail and the actual room for the rail itself. That's all you need. All right, so I think this is the last door. This is what came. So hang on. So right here, we'll show you this one now. You might be wondering what this carrier is. Well, let's show you the wiring first and see if you can work it out. I am a little bit concerned about entity spam because I have one door that contains 10 ship cores. So, I mean, if I can come up with something like this, I'm pretty sure that anyone can. And look, look at them all merrily in procession. Isn't that awesome? And they just all stack up like beads on an abacus. Okay. Oh, where's my door gone? It's up here now. Huh. Now that is a cool feature. So let's just zap it and see what it does. Come on. Yes. Look at that. It's beautiful. Really smooth animation. The movement's brilliant. Just like a roller door the same exact concept as before but a little different I mean the one I made last night was a lot more fancy um, but like I say I think I've lost that one now and everything on it okay so right now this is the best door in the whole build guys the Plex door look at that it's three by three and it's got no logic wiring or rails no, seriously though, it is an awesome feature. So I think I'll just quickly take a look at some of these before we go. That's the workings on that one. Uh, this one is not an easy shot, but we've seen how that works. That one is, we've seen how that works. That one's pretty basic as well. It's one of my favorites as well. I like these twisty ones. Twisty ones are cool. And then we've got this one, which is like uber um, complicated. Show me that one, show me that one, show me that one. Have I broken all? Oh no, wait, there we go. No, he broke the logic. That was good. 
Yep, so I think that's everything. I just wanted to be sure because there's about 12 doors there that I needed to show. And that is it. All of them, like I say, are completely seamless. You can't see any of the wiring. Um, there's not really that many blocks. The system by which I built all of these rails, uh, all of these rail doors, is based on the system I showed earlier, which was this concept here. Yes, I know there are better ways of doing it. I'm often being watched by people who haven't had a go at this yet. So with respect, if you know how to do it, you're probably one of a select few at this point. So um, this is inspiration for people not knowing what to do with their doors. And just a couple of ideas. I'd love to see what other people can do. Because this, as I say, is a sandbox game, so there's going to be a lot of new suggestions. So basically, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time sandbox games there's going to be a lot of new suggestions so basically thanks for watching and i'll see you next time